This is a fan-generated show. If you'd like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our new Rumble channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm thrilled to announce the release of my new book, Obama's True Legacy, How He Transformed America. There's a reason why Mike Huckabee calls it a ferocious and chilling read. Order it now at Amazon.com or at FrontPageMag.com. Many people are saying that they knew Candace Owens was not on the level all along, and more evidence continues to come in. Most recently, Candace Owens has claimed that right after 9-11, when she was 11 years old, she began to be beaten over the head, brainwashed, and indoctrinated with the claim that every Muslim was a terrorist. She is now deeply ashamed of this, although she didn't really have anything to do with it. She was merely a passive recipient of this alleged indoctrination, but she nonetheless issued an apology on behalf of all Americans to Muslims in the United States for how they were treated after 9-11. This might seem at first glance to be an expansive and generous act of compassion and understanding. The problem is that everything she said from beginning to end was entirely false. In the first place, I would challenge Candace Owens right now to say exactly where the classroom was that she was supposedly brainwashed and indoctrinated into thinking that every Muslim was a terrorist. Give us the name of the school, the city it's in, and the name of the teacher or teachers who were doing this. The reason why I ask this is because I remember what happened right after 9-11. Six days after 9-11, President George W. Bush went into a large mosque in Washington, D.C., in the company of some of the most prominent Muslim leaders in the United States, and he proclaimed that Islam is peace, and he warned Americans against retaliating against innocent Muslims in the U.S. by harassing women who wore hijab or something of that nature. There has never been anywhere at any time by anyone the idea advanced that every Muslim was a terrorist. As a matter of fact, not only has this idea never been advanced by anyone except maybe a few marginal nuts. I myself am one of the primary people who have been accused of this and accused of it repeatedly. And yet every last accusation of this kind has been false. What really happened right after 9-11 was that I and others who also called attention to the texts and teachings of the Islamic religion that justify violence, terrorism, supremacism, aggression, and oppression were vilified and demonized as racist, bigoted, bigoted, bigots, and Islamophobes. The fact is that in literally hundreds, if not thousands, of radio and television interviews in the years from immediately following 9-11, right up to today, I have been asked to affirm that not all Muslims are terrorists. And a large number of hosts who have been kind enough to have me on their programs have been very anxious to dispel the impression that I or anybody else in this line thinks that every Muslim is a terrorist. What was really happening in schools when Candace Owens was in an elementary school was that we were told, the students rather, were told, and the American public in general was told, that all Muslims, except for a tiny minority of extremists, rejected what happened on 9-11, were horrified by terrorism, and that this act of the... 9-11 hijackers had nothing whatsoever to do with authentic Islam. Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, would have abhorred it and condemned it. And Muslim groups, we were told, 
were condemning it and working against it all around the country and indeed around the world. Now, it is certainly true, and I'll say it one more time, one of the things that I have said most frequently in my lifetime, not all Muslims are terrorists. However, it is indeed true, unfortunately, that Muhammad said, I have been made victorious through terror. And the Quran three times speaks about striking terror in the enemies of Allah. There are some Islamic apologists who attempt to make a hair-splitting distinction here and say, well, they're talking about the fear of God. They're not talking about modern-day terrorism, blowing things up, and so on. But when you read the Islamic accounts of the life of Muhammad, terrorism is exactly what he engages in. Raiding towns that were filled with non-Muslims, torturing people until they converted to Islam or were killed, taking sex slaves of the infidel women who were captured, and so on and on and on, Muhammad behaved in exactly the same way that modern-day terrorists behave. But I'm one of the only people who will dare to tell you that, even now in the year 2024, because I have been vilified, marginalized, demonized, deplatformed, stigmatized, and silenced. I'm still alive, and so what else are they going to do? I guess they could put me in prison or bar me from using the internet altogether, as a society in Britain recommended to the British government several years ago. But until that happens, I'm going to continue to speak the truth. Now, the reason why I mention this is because the fact that it is so rare to hear such things, and the fact that people such as me and many others have been so excoriated for telling these truths is an indication that what Candace Owens is saying is completely fictional. The climate after 9-11 and the climate today is the same, that people are very anxious to show that they are not Islamophobic. They're very anxious to show that they are not racist and bigoted because Islamic groups in the U.S., such as the Hamas-linked Council on American Islamic Relations and others have done an extraordinarily skillful job and successful job in company with the leftists of the establishment media of making people assume wrongly, but nonetheless, people assume that if you say that Muhammad taught terror, that the Quran teaches terror, that the Quran teaches warfare against unbelievers, that therefore you hate Muslims that therefore you're saying every Muslim is a terrorist. Now that doesn't follow any more than if you say, Jesus said, love your enemies and turn the other cheek. Therefore, every Christian is meek, mild, gentle, sweet, kind, magnanimous, and forgiving. That would be absurd to say. And nobody has any problem understanding that. But when you say, Islam teaches violence and subjugation of unbelievers, but that doesn't mean every Muslim is a terrorist. People will say, no, you're saying every Muslim is a terrorist. And this is the kind of nonsense that Candace Owens is propagating now. The reason why she's doing it is because victimhood is a prized commodity in American society today. There is nothing more lucrative and nothing more coveted, nothing more celebrated than to be a victim. And so Muslim groups have very skillfully played this card and portrayed themselves as members of a victimized group, victimized by people like me who tell the truth about Islam. And consequently, they have been able to gain entree into the highest levels of the leftist elites and have been able to gain all the rights and privileges appertaining to the status of victimhood in our society today. It's absurd, it's ridiculous, but it's the way things work. And so Candace Owens is feeding into this idea of Muslim victimhood in order to make her followers think, it's oh, it's wrong, we can't think about Islamic terrorism, and if Hamas goes and murders 1,200 Israelis, we can't be upset about that, 
because we know that Islam is a religion of peace and we know how evil the Israelis and the Jews in general are, because, of course, Candace Owens is also telling them a lot of lies about that. And so it becomes a self-reinforcing set of false assumptions that build upon each other and feed upon each other. Candace Owens is extraordinarily irresponsible to do this because the point, the point of playing victim and the point of tarring people who speak the truth about Islam as Islamophobes is to make people ashamed of calling out Islamic jihad violence and Sharia oppression of women and others. And that means that if those people are silenced because they're the terrible Islamophobes, according to Candace Owens, there will be more jihad violence and Sharia oppression because there will be fewer voices around to say this should not be happening, this is wrong, people who care about human rights and the human dignity of all people should stand up against it. And so uh, I want to say to Candace Owens right now, you can't really be serious about this. And so I'm asking you to substantiate your claims, give us the name of the school, give us the name of the teachers, give us the materials that you were taught because I can guarantee, I 100%, I don't know where you lived. I don't know where you grew up. I don't know what school you went to. But I will go out on a limb right now and say I'm 100% certain without any doubt whatsoever that you were taught in school that Islam was a religion of peace that had been hijacked by a tiny minority of extremists. And that above all, we must be kind and be especially solicitous toward Muslims because they are being oppressed and victimized. The oppression and the victimization, we never actually see that, but we certainly hear a great deal said about it, and that's because it's a political weapon. And Candace Owens uh, ought to be ashamed of herself for taking up this weapon now when the U.S. and the world are more threatened by Islamic jihadis than they have been since 9-11. Robert Spencer here for the Glazov Gang. Thank you very much.